Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be doing a bit of an unboxing here. What I have here is a new 3D printer. So I've been talking with my friends over at Gearbest, Fernie in particular, and she'd mentioned that they, they have this uh, printer. I'm not sure if I'd want to call it new, but uh, anyway, she said I'd be interested in it, and I took a look at it, and it did seem fairly interesting because I've done big. I've done the Tron XE, the JG Aurora, the CR10. I've done small with the Monoprice, the Green Tech and the Magician. Um, I've done middle tier with the Wanhao, the, the Tarantula, you name it. I've had about it all. And I've even had dual extrusion because actually my first 3D printer that got me into this hobby was the DaVinci 2.0. Now back in that day the, the slicing software is pretty crappy on the DaVinci. I think probably still is today. Maybe it's gotten a little better. I don't know because I've reflashed mine but I never really took advantage of dual extrusion. And I wanted to get back into it, but I don't really want to use the DaVinci 2.0 for that. So I wanted a new solution, so she suggested this. So this is the Zone Star, and I'll have a little bit of an overlay up in the corner for you. And she sent this out to me. Now it is a kit. You have to build it. So what I'm going to do is do an unboxing in this video, kind of share with you some of the concepts of it. And then we're going to uh, do, as I typically do, a complete build series on how to build this printer. So if you're interested, I'll have the link to this printer down below on the GearBest site. And uh, again, I will produce a complete video uh, of how to build this thing. And then I'm also going to do a set of videos on how to slice and actually design for dual extrusion. So anyways, I think this is pretty exciting and I'm pretty excited about it. So let's start off with some of the basics here. So it's rather interesting the size of box this came in. So in short, we're at about 23 inches or maybe, you know, about 480 millimeters by um, about 19 inches and again about 40. So pretty much square. But what really gets me is it's only about 5 inches tall or about eh, roughly 120 millimeters tall. Uh, came packaged in this... Um, Kind of plastic wrap and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just kind of slice this open get the blade in underneath it's pretty pretty robust wrap so I'm going to go ahead so we here we have it the zone star so again, I, I, I saw quite a few things out on Thingiverse for, the, for this. I won't really call this a new printer because I don't think it's a new printer, but I really like the price point this came in at. This was around, I think, $258 USD, something like that. So again, very affordable for if you want to get into a dual extruder uh, type printer setup. So I'm going to go ahead. The box looks very nice, very professional versus a lot of the just generic... Uh, Chinese cardboard boxes and actually the quality of the cardboard is actually pretty good too which is unusual usually you get the uh, high clay content cardboard cardboard I guess so let's go ahead and open this up wow look at that whiteness okay so we have uh, some nice foam packing here kind of remove it and uh, this does look very nicely packed. So it looks like they give us some obligatory tape. Um, they give us some uh, sample filament. We got a USB cable, and it looks like we have all the uh, prerequisite parts. I think you know, for the most part, you guys have seen this in the past. I'll kind of pull this out now. It does have appears some 3D printed parts. The quality on these uh, actually looks pretty good, and I want to take these out kind of talk about these and let's take a little bit closer look. This is um, one of the places where I was a little bit more concerned and you can see it's still got a little bit of the uh, 3D, I mean 3D, the uh, blue painters tape on it. The quality of this print though is actually really good so I'm happy with that. Um, looks like it might be a PET G or something. It does not look to be ABS. I don't know, it might be PLA uh, but it's got the bearings installed it's got the anti-backlash brass screws already installed. So this is a nice touch that, that these features are already pre-assembled. And here, this apparently must be for the Z-Stop. And again, similar assembly with the linear bearings uh, in there. 
And again, pretty good quality, so I'm happy with that. I'm assuming this is going to be the power supply. And I'll pull this stuff out in, in a second and kind of lay it out on the table and get ready for the build. I just kind of want to take a look at some of the uh, pieces here uh, because this is the first time I'm seeing it also in person. So I like the way everything is uh, roughly put together here. So we have some more 3D printed pieces. Again, quality looks good. So I'm happy. I'm happy about that. You know, and again, for um, you know, roughly a $250 price point, uh, I'm going to say that's not too bad. I want to put these back in the packaging because one of the things I'm going to do is lay out uh, the parts with the packaging. So I want to kind of keep that together. I want to show you guys some of the pieces. Um, again, I like I like this piece too here. So this uh, uh, comes in a little box versus the plastic bag. So this is a nice touch from a kit builder standpoint. And it looks like we got the control panel front here with the little push buttons for controls. That looks nice. I really like the looks. There's a lot of aluminum that comes as part of this kit. So tell you what, let's go ahead, let's get this laid out on the bench and then come back and let's take a deeper look at it. Okay, so welcome back. I've laid out all the major parts on the bench here and I want to talk about a few of the pieces. So one of the things when I unbox something like this, you know, I go through, check to make sure all the pieces are here. And uh, one of the things, it didn't come with any type of paper instructions or material list. I'm assuming that everything is going to be on this memory card. I haven't looked at that yet, but from what I would expect, everything seems to be here. I've got uh, I've got my dual hot end, which I'll talk about in a minute. I've got both my extruders. I've got all my motors. I've got my stanchions. I've got my end stops, tools, uh, motor connecting pieces, screws, um, uh, you know, clips and, and wire containment over here, and uh, motor mounting brackets for the extruders. So everything looks like it's here, or I would account for for building something like this. So. Uh, the only thing that I noticed was a little bit wanky was the uh, control board, uh, which, you know, this ramp is actually popped off, but I kind of come to expect some of those challenges, so I'm hoping I can just receipt this and this will be okay. But this is the only piece that I found uh, that was problematic. Now, one of the pieces I also want to share with you guys that I liked about this kit is the frame is predominantly metal, uh, nice quality metal. The edges are not sharp on this, uh, which is nice. It looks like it might even be laser cut and stamped or something like that, because uh, there's actually like small burn marks or it might be plasma cut uh, out, because again, you can see here are and everything, but uh, really nice look. I liked the looks of this printer when I saw it, when, when Fernie sent it to me. So that was another reason I decided to go ahead and, and build this one. Uh, and also the price point, again, uh, real good price point. Now, one of the other things that I really liked and I was encouraged when I saw I took it out of the box is it looks like the hot end assembly is pretty much pre-built. So I'm going to take go ahead and take this out. So this is a big work saver when we go to assemble this. So notice this that uh, so we have the two hot ends. It looks like it shares a, a heat block in there. Not really clear. I'll take a little bit closer look at this whole setup. Uh, but you see the two Bowden inputs here uh, with the pressure fits and the two nozzles down here. And so uh, all this actually looks pretty good and it says QC pass, so that's got to be good, right? Uh, so and you see the bearings are already mounted. So again, I was, you know, this is, I was afraid going to be one of the big time consumers and it's already assembled. So pretty much the assembly of this is going to be based upon building the frame, connecting the wires and just simply mounting stuff up, which is really encouraging. Now, uh, the other piece is, I believe, and I, I read online that this is a, um, a proximity sensor for uh, bed leveling. So we'll have to see how this works. I've read a couple things online about it, so we'll have to confirm that. Again, I haven't looked at the instructions. I'm hoping they're on that SD card. And again, that's one of the reasons I do these. So I do complete build video to kind of help you guys out. So if you're interested in going the same route, uh, 
you can kind of follow along and, and get your questions answered. And also, if you have questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. You know, even if you're watching this video in the future, you know, go ahead, hit the comments below. I check usually check comments once a day. Uh, the motors seem to be okay. I wouldn't call them, you know, uh, super high quality, but I think they're more than acceptable for the money. And again, the bearings, again, I think, uh, again, for the price point, is, is, is a lot of goodness here. Uh, and, and I'm excited because I think one of the pieces as 3D printing technology moves forward, uh, dual extrusion or multiple extrusion, for that matter, uh, is going to become, I think, more important to kind of uh, home industrialize the technology a little bit. Uh, here also is the bed. So you can see the size of the bed. Let's go ahead and just uh, get some confirmed measurements for you guys. And it's 200 by 200, which is basically what it said it was going to be, so they didn't lie about that. The uh, rods and, and lead screws are in here. Just kind of watch. Uh, the one end was open on this tube, and, and some of it fell out as I was unboxing it, um, because I assumed both were like going to be like that, but apparently this side had popped out in transit. Um, the other thing is, let's take a look at the power supply. I'm betting 12 volts, and that's what it is, 12 volts. Uh, would have been nicer to have a 24 volt, but for this size heated bed and everything, I think 12 volts will be fine. Um, so again, uh, this is pretty much what you get in the kit for, I think, roughly 258 bucks. I'll see, I'm not sure as at the uh, time of filming if, if I can get a coupon code, but definitely check the website or my website, and I'll have links down below uh, if there is, and if you want to follow along, that's great. Uh, if you have any questions about this, or hey, if you built one of these, give me some tips below. Happy to hear about it. So anyways, in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in, and I'm going to sort out how we start building this, and we'll kick off our first build video after this. I will probably break it up as I typically do these in building the frame, you know, mounting the, the uh, mechanics of it, the motors, all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, the linear rods, etc. And then the electronics. So probably look for about three videos after this one encompassing the build. And then, like I said, I'm going to do a couple videos on, on, you know, designing for dual extrusion, the slicing, and all that stuff. So I'll have a complete um, uh, video catalog for this printer and dual extrusion. So hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up in the swag shop up in the corner. Hit me up in the comments below with any questions, and we'll see you in the next video when we start building this guy. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all